crank her on up, buddy. It started with a salvage yard hunt for twin Ford 351, Windsor at a Cleveland. After tearing down both engines for machining, we jumped on the Cleveland build first with a new roller cam and repurposed original crank. We upgraded to H-beam rods, hanging new forged flat top pistons. The machine factory heads went back on the block, but with new springs, guide plates, studs, and stainless valves. The plan for today, well, we're gonna get this Cleveland finished up, get that Windsor built, and then get them both off to the dyno, where I've actually got a set of four V heads coming in for this Cleveland. We'll swap them out and actually see what happens with real results. With the tolerances corrected by these BHJ bushings, these retrofit small block forward roller lifters from Comp drop right into the Cleveland block, followed by a set of their push rods, and finally, a set of roller rocker arms with a 18173 combo. We chose a single plane track heat intake manifold from TrickFlow with a raised plenum floor that increases flow velocity and fuel atomization. At this point, I want to pour in a few quarts of Comp's 1040 break in oil and prime the engine just to get our valve train thoroughly lubed. We'll light this Cleveland off with a Mallory HEI distributor and top off the valve train with a pair of tall Ford Racing valve covers. To finish up here, a set of eight millimeter Mallory wires down to the plugs. That's it for the Cleveland until dyno time. Now we're on to the Windsor. Now I've gone ahead and pre-fitted our Eagle stroker crank just to check for any last minute clearance issues and we got one. Now even though it physically clears at high RPM and once this motor heats up, it's probably not gonna be enough. All you need to do to fix this is cover up your exposed journals and take a die grinder to slowly work the area and check as you go. Once you've got about 80 thousandths clearance, or you can fit a medium sized zip tie in between, you're good to go. After a jet washing, we can get back to business. Installing this Edelbrock Rolling Thunder Hydraulic Roller. It's the same one they use in their 347 stroker crate engine that makes over 500 horsepower. We'll keep our in place stable with this new cam plate made out of bronze. With that new cam and the four inch stroke of this Eagle crank, we should beat that 500 number. And after torquing ARP studs to 110 foot-pounds, we can sync the two together with this Edelbrock double roller timing set. Well, John degrees the cam, I gotta show you something we got in store. Edelbrock makes a top-end kit that boasts right up to the Windsor that essentially turns it into a cleaver. You'll see more of it later, but in order for it to make room for these larger canted Cleveland valves, well, we have to have a different piston design like this one from Pro. Now the dish has valve reliefs for big inch cams, uses floating pins, and we've loaded ours with rings, molly rings that is, from Summit that measure 1 16th, 1 16th, and 3 16th. Combined with the 6.2 length HB rod and our new heads, We'll end up with a 10 to 1 compression ratio, complemented by an Edelbrock timing chain cover and ATI Super Damper Balancer. And when we get back, we'll go ahead and finish up this bottom end and officially make this thing a cleavor. We're back to finish our 351 Windsor, soon to be a cleaver. The next step is to verify zero at top dead center against our new timing pointer that also came from ATI. For oil supply, we're using a drive shaft from ARP in conjunction with a basic part store oil pump, followed by a pickup from Ford Racing. It's designed to work with the 351 oil pan they sent us, and this completes the bottom end. For the top end, we'll start with these retrofit Edelbrock hydraulic rotor lifters. After a set of comedic multi-layer steel gaskets, we'll be ready for those Edelbrock cleaver heads. And they're ready to go right out of the box. Now just like the original Clevelands, these have a bigger set of valves. Intakes on these are 2050 and the exhausts are inch 600, combined with a 60cc combustion chamber. So with our dish pistons, we're looking at a 10 to 1 compression ratio. They also come with a Boss 302 type adjustable 7 16th stud and guide plate setup. After a three stage torque sequence, we can drop in the push rods and then install a set of roller rocker arms. Now, just like the Cleveland, this is a 17318 combo. 
Remember during the teardown, we showed you how water exited the block from the Cleveland and exited the intake from the Windsor? Now back before my time, it took a lot of machining and welding to get this combination to work right. Now what Edelbrock's done to fix that is gone ahead and tied into the water ports here in the head, which lines up with this hole in the intake, connecting the two water passages in the cylinder heads, now allowing all our hot water to dump out the front. Now this motor will move water through just like another Windsor. Of course, it's cast with a standard bore carburetor pad. With that handle, we can now bolt down our valve covers and drop in our distributor, this time an Excel Street billet, and a set of their 8mm wires. Now the Windsor turned cleaver is dyno ready. Before any testing though, let's look at the changes we've made to these famous Fords. For the Cleveland, stroke and rod length are the same as factory, the cylinders were bored 30 over, and we upgraded to a roller cam with more lift and duration. For intake, we went from a cast iron dual plane to aluminum single plane, and from a two to four barrel carburetor. Displacements just over factory at 357 cubic inches. Now for the Windsor. We upgraded it to a 10 to one compression, gave it a fully forged bottom end, a more aggressive streetable roller camshaft, aluminum heads, along with a dual plane intake. Now all this plus a lot more equals a 408 cubic inch cleavor. We'll burn some fuel in both engines on the dyno next. So far we've showed you what you need to know about the differences in Cleveland's and Windsor's. Now it's time to show you what our modified Cleveland does on the dyno and see if John's new psychiatrist <laughs> does any good. Hey, Joe. Anyway, we're going to cool our 351s with a mechanical water pump and send the exhaust out a pair of Hooker long tube headers and feed them 93 octane through a Demon 750 CFM car. We'll make our first runs with the smaller 2V heads, which in layman terms stands for two barrel carburetor. Before we switch to the 4Vs or four barrel heads, waiting outside the door. I like toast and bacon. After a warm up and setting the dyno's RPM sweep to six grand, we made a 386 horsepower run right out of the gate. The follow up run, same identical horsepower with a little more torque at 397 foot pounds. Finally, our best horsepower pull of the series, 390. Now that swap we've been waiting for. The 4Vs have a much larger intake runner. Get this, by 30%. The same goes for the valves, 6.4% larger on the intake, 3.5% larger on the exhaust. Everything else stays the same, from the carburetor, intake, to the headers. Everything looks good, temps up, oil pressure, three to six, here we go. We got 378, 385. We're down on power, down on torque. Torque is down about 10 from our 2V heads. Yep. With the oil back up to temperature, along with the heads, we should see a few more horsepower. All right. 387, 385. 385. Come up a little bit. Now let's see where are we at on timing. It looks like 34 degrees. 34 right now. Okay. You want to put degree, degree and a half into it. We'll see where it goes. If okay. it goes backwards, we'll come back okay. to 33. Let's do it. I think it's gonna like it with that big head. I do. That increase will put us at 36 degrees. We're peaking at 5,500 RPM consistently. 387 horsepower and 390 foot pounds is as good as it's gonna get. So that's it. 2V for the street. I take it. This bright line here is our 2V torque curve. Now I'm going to bring up the 4V torque curve, and you can see that the 2V outperformed the 4V all the way up to about 4,700 RPM. From there, the 4V took over, but then dropped back off to finish out the RPM range. This bright green line is our horsepower curve with our 2V head. The light green line is our horsepower curve with our 4V head. Now you can see, just like with the torque, the 2V head outperformed the 4V all the way up to about 4,700 RPM. The 4V then took over, but dropped right back off. Now that shows that the 4V may be good for race, but the 2V is the one for the street. 
After a quick engine swap, we can fire up the cleavor, set initial timing at 32 degrees, adjust the carb floats and curb idle a bit, warm it up and run it. From three grand to 5,500. Remember, this engine was built with torque as the priority. Did it work? 500 foot pounds of torque at 3,800, 445 horsepower at 5,000. That's, that's hard. the first pull, too. Yeah, Finally, man. Hard. God, give me you're one right, that makes 500. Right. No, we're making 500 today. Now for the challenge. How much horsepower can we tune for without losing torque? There's a sweet spot in there somewhere. Let the hunt begin. You can tell this thing's making big torque down low with the way it loads up on the brake. 452, 484. That's seven more horsepower at the cost of 16 foot pounds of torque. We'll see what small increases in timing will do. 458 horsepower, 489 torque. A slight and almost equal gain. Yeah, fuel is still good. It did not like two degrees. It actually leaned out a little bit from the 32 to the 34 run. Maybe it just wants fuel. More timing is not getting us there. Back into 30. Okay. Let's see what direction see what it goes. Happens. That's two degrees less than the initial run. Five oh two. Give it to me. Five hundred and two foot pounds of torque Fine. at thirty nine hundred. Holy smokes. Made 468 on power at 54. Yes, it did. So we got the torque back and found 23 more horsepower. 502. Awesome little motor, John. Cool, thanks, man. Today we proved that the 2V and the 4V heads both have their purpose. The 2V for the street, the 4V for high performance race engines. Now they both had comparable horsepower and torque numbers and that's because we never saw the full potential of the 4Vs. That's because this engine was built for the street. It had a mild camshaft, mild compression, and we only turned at 6,000 RPM. So unless you plan to build a Cleveland with high compression, a big camshaft, and you're gonna turn at 75 to 8,500 RPM, the 2Vs are the way to go. Now the Cleavor, well it packed quite a bit more punch, and that was all kind of thanks to a little bit bigger camshaft, aluminum heads, as well as that 4 inch stroke. Now the idle quality was absolutely perfect, and we had over 500 foot-pounds of torque out of this thing. With this little dual plane intake, things like vacuum, overall drivability, and throttle response, well they're not going to be a problem at all. And the best part is, they ran great today, but they would look even better inside a new car. You're watching Horsepower. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Horsepower collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. If you want your big or small block to be a real performer, well, here's the carb you should mount on it. It's Edelbrock's Performer Series 750 CFM square flange with a manual choke. Finishes available are vintage like this or the new black powder coat. How cool is that? Now both feature timed and full vacuum ports for ignition vents, single inlet fuel lines, and they work well with performer RPM, RPM air gap, even torque or two intake manifolds. The price? Well, $285 for the satin finish, about $430 for the black powder coat. But if you're out for a true vintage look with dyno proven performance, Edelbrock 94 carb is the bee's knees, as they used to say. These made in the USA mixers are perfect for your numbers matching hot rod or restoration ride, giving you the looks and performance you want. They have die cast bowls and air horns, plus a three bolt aluminum base. The shaft is extended, so it works with any dual or three carb combo, all for about 350 bucks. We all love to have cool new tools at the shop, especially when one has as many uses as this easy puller from LasVegasTools.com. Now you can easily pull everything from seals to broken bits, even a homemade cotter pin like this one. You just clamp the locking pliers onto the item you want to remove and slide the two pound hammer quickly along the slide bolt to the end, creating a powerful pulling force. Just remove the quarter inch bolt at the upper jaw along with the slide handle assembly and you've got a traditional set of locking pliers. It comes in a protective carrying case and sells for about $39.95. Imagine getting precise measurements of your vehicle's horsepower and torque 
while you drive your car. Well, now you can with AEM's new Pro Series Dyno Shaft. It uses yoke mounted strain gauges mounted to a chromoly yoke to measure torque, while a speed sensor inside of this housing measures RPM. Now, this thing bolts to the back of the transmission using these adapters supplied and then sends information to a separately purchased data logger. Now, this system will work with other data loggers on the market. Now, this is an accurate and precise way to measure your horsepower and torque in any condition, uphill, downhill, or with a strong headwind. If you want to dyno on your car from AEM, plan on spending about $1,400. If you are in the market for a new ignition box, this could be your spark of choice. It's Mallory's Roush Yates Racing Ignition System, a digital multi-spark CD box that's designed for competition and high endurance applications. Now it works with four, six, and eight cylinder distributors, got the built-in rev limiter, and it's fully encapsulated to resist all the elements. Cost about 350 bucks. Sure, you want a top quality distributor for your small or big block Chevy, but you don't want to distribute a lot of cash to get it. Well, this Petronix Billet Flamethrower has got all the features you want, like a precision magnetic pickup coil and reluctor for accurate signaling at low and high RPM, plus a built-in rev limiter and adaptive dwell for improved spark energy and better mileage. Got an improved price, too, at less than 285 bucks. Finally, we want to tell you about some hot parts for a good cause. Maco Tools is selling a special edition series of pink products with 15% of the sales going towards a charity called Susan G. Komen for the Cure. Now they're working to end breast cancer worldwide through research and outreach programs. Now some of the things you can get are a pink toolbox money bank, a pink screwdriver set, and impact wrench boot covers. That's just some of the products offered. Now, if you want to learn more about the charity, check out www.5.coman.org or call the number you see listed on the screen. Now, that's all the time we've got for today. And remember, save the tatas.